As we come to a close of Season 1 inside of Diablo Immortal, I want to highlight one of the Crusader builds that's been seeing a ton of success. It's done and put together by Maestro. Let's go take a look. What is up, my friends? My name is Echo. We're finishing up Season 1 and about to start Season 2 and start putting together builds for Season 2. I get all of my builds from people that I play with, people that are inside of my server, and people that are part of the family. We try and look at some of the strongest players with all different varieties of builds. Some people that are free to play, some people that spend money inside of the game. It's worth noting, if you see a lot of high-level 5-star gems, you know that that person has paid for the game, has spent some money inside of the game. So, so if you're someone that's a free-to-play player, that type of a build may not be for you. Now, we are looking at a small spender here, so let's take a look at the initial equipment that's inside of this Crusader build. Starting with the headpiece, we have a two-stat, many-eyed Aegis headpiece. This piece has been paired with the Chained Death Legendary Gem. It's a one-star gem. This piece of gear has been resonated, and we have increased damage done by your attacks by 2.5 per target, up to a maximum of 17.5 with seven targets. So if you're a free to play player, this is a good gem that's going to be able to increase the damage that your build can do. Coming in with the shoulders, we have a triple stat, Sivgit's Advantage. The gem socketed is a three out of five star blood soaked jade. This is probably the best gem if you're looking to drop damage on your opponents. This one here increases the damage you deal by 10 and a half percent and your movement speed by 10 percent. Now, keep in mind, this is a three out of five star only ranked up to level three, already increasing your damage by that much. You're also going to take 2% less damage when your life is below 50%, so a little bit more on the defense as well. Your primary weapon is going to be the Little Lance, which is a two-stat weapon. The socketed gem is Blessing of the Worthy. This is a four out of five star gem and ranked up to level four. When you take damage, you have a 20% chance to unleash retribution on all nearby enemies, dealing equal to 17% of your health. And it also decreases all the damage you take by 4% for 6 seconds. This can't happen more than every 20 seconds. Now, this was the gem that was available for purchase in packs during Season 1. Looks like some people have taken advantage of that, built up their power from that. And as you take a look at their gem resonance, it's sitting at 1,372. This gem at level 4 has definitely helped get to that point in time. For the chest piece, we have a triple stat Besiger. Now you may be asking, what are the actual stats of these pieces of gear? And I'm gonna be looking specifically when we take a look at the skills next at how the gear stats are gonna change up how the skills actually function. Socketed is the Bloody Reach, which is a two star gem. Your attacks deal 3.4% increased damage every two yards between you and your enemy hit. Now for someone that's a melee character, you really are in close range. So for a bruh, for a, for a Crusader, I don't know that this one is probably the best gem. I would probably be switching this one out for something else. Now we have a triple stat leg piece permanent reproach and socketed here is power and command i like this gem i was using it for a while but i sometimes get on the fence about two star gems they're expensive to upgrade yet they're only two star gems so i don't know that it's worth working with a two star versus a five star if you have the opportunity there or just going max with a one star gem but the power and command alternate states every nine seconds Power increases your primary attack damage by 13.5%, and command is going to increase your skill damage by 13.5%. Of course, this back, this is back and forth, alternating back and forth all the time, every few seconds. Now we have secondary gear, another triple set piece right here, Grimcrack Buckler. And socketed here, we have one of the best gems in the game. This is a Phoenix Ashes, three out of five stars, upgraded to level four, which prevents fatal damage and grants a shield for six seconds that absorbs equal damage up to 660% of your base damage. Now, I mentioned to you guys that the modification of those skills based on the gear that you were wearing, I was gonna mention during the skill discussion, the skill walkthrough, which we are looking at right now. So the first skill being used is Falling Sword. Falling Sword is another damage doer where it's going to offer 5,672 damage over five seconds to anything that's nearby. Now, from the hand piece, this is going to be changed into Surging Sword, where instead you're going to be surging forward, dealing 5,827 damage because of that hand piece. Draw and Quarter is the next skill, which is probably one of the best ones or the most known ones. It's kind of like Whirlwind for the Barbarian, but it's Draw and Quarter for the Crusader. It's the one that everyone knows and likes. Do they use it high level or not? It depends on the build, but Draw and Quarter is being used here. Now, there are two modifications being used here. The first is from the chess piece. Draw and Quarter periodically calls down 
a bombardment for 1,100 fine damage. So more damage being dropped. Then the duration is increased for 30 seconds, which is coming from the shoulder piece. In addition to that, a charm is being used, which is increasing damage by another 2%. Consecration is the third skill, which is going to consecrate the ground around you, dealing 15,384 damage to all nearby enemies for six seconds. Now, there are two modifications being used right here. One of them is another 2% worth of damage done by the charm. But because of the headpiece we're wearing, your consecration now moves with you and deals 15,696 damage over six seconds. I'm telling you, I'm missing playing the Crusader. I kind of like the skills better here than the ones that I get to use as my Barbarian, if I'm being honest. Condemn is the final skill, which is to build up a massive explosion, dealing 7,524 damage to all nearby enemies over six seconds. And because of the leg piece, we have a 20% radius increase for Condemn. The primary attack that's being used is Punish. And because of the offhand weapon, or the secondary weapon, while Punish has granted you hardened senses, your blocks will trigger an explosion dealing 1,493 damage to all nearby enemies. So even a nice boost to the primary attack. And as you can see for Paragon, the Treasure Hunter tree is being used. I don't know about using Treasure Hunter all the way like this. Obviously, he's looking for rewards as he farms up his character. For me, I'd probably build this more similar to how I built my Barbarian, getting that damage, just trying to get as much damage as you can, because you are essentially a tanky character. You're a damaged dealer and you're going to want to deal as much damage as you possibly can but for this one it's treasure hunter do as you feel fit when it comes to paragon so we're tuning in right now as the crusader king or as the mad king is being defeated by this crusader build something that i really love about the crusader itself is that it's really fast right so if I'm using my Barbarian class, I need to use Sprint to gain that speed. But when you're the Crusader, you could jump on your horse and quickly run and quickly move around the map. It's definitely the fastest tank class inside of the game, really only being compared to the Barbarian. But I love the damage that can be dealt, and I love the speed that the Crusader offers. So as I said, guys, those are the builds for all of the classes inside of Diablo Immortal for Season 1. Season 2 is upon us. Time to put together some more builds for all of the character classes. If you have a build that you want me to take a look at that you like, if you're high Paragon and really rocking a certain character class, hit me up on Discord in the Scrappy Echoes Discord server and you can share with me your builds. We can take a look at it. If I think it's legit, we can share it here on the channel. And also, if you want to join us as the Immortals inside of Diablo Immortal, as Shadows inside of Diablo Immortal, we got clans all over the place. You can also come through that same Discord link, link down below. Join us. Guys, if you want more builds, more Diablo Immortal, hashtag more Diablo Immortal in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one and be good.